Are you ready to study the Word of God? Yes. Do you have your Bibles with you? Yes. Okay. For those who ordered some Bibles, the Bibles are ready. Just approach Dr. Brother Bob. Okay. Para makuha niyo yung copies niyo. If you want to invest on a Bible, like for example, ito maganda, medyo leather bound. It's around between 75 to 100 dirhams. If you want, I can buy it for you at DECC. Uh, or you can go there at Jebel Ali. There's a Christian bookstore there in some of our churches. And it's good. It's a nice place. It's a small place, but it's a nice place to spend your time at. Uh, looking for some things that can help us grow in our uh, relationship with the Lord. Okay? So, kung gusto niyo pumunta doon, kung di niyo alam, samahan mo kayo. Basta may makbo. Okay? All right. So, uh, let us uh, go proceed now to the study of the Word of God. Open your Bibles to John chapter number 4. And this is our main text as we uh, focus on our theme for this month, Radical Worship. And again, this is in line with our overall theme for this year, which is Radical Discipleship. And um, again, when you say radical, it means uh, foundational, uh, essential, the root truths about something. And particularly, we're talking about worship. And it also means being extremely committed to it. So kapag nag-aral tayo uh, ng salita na Pahinan, for example, ang theme natin ay radical worship, ang ginagawa natin ay tinitignan natin yung basic truths about worship. And as we look into it, as we rediscover them, ang goal natin is that we would be radically committed to them. Okay? So hindi lang basta pinag-aaralan natin, pero ang goal natin, maging committed talaga tayo sa isang bagay. And that's... And what we're looking at this month is all about uh, worship. Now, we have learned last week that God seeks true worshipers, right? If you open your Bibles to John chapter number 4. Okay. John chapter number 4. And if you look at verse number 23, it says there, But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. So God is looking for worshipers who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. And in our series, we're trying to answer the question, What kind of worship does God not seek? So we're looking into the negative side as we look into uh, John chapter number 4 as we try to extract some basic principles about about worship. And sabi natin last week, the first thing that the kind of worship that God does not seek is anyan? Idolatrous worship. Okay, when we say idolatrous worship, ang um, ibig sabihin ay we speak about the kind of worship that is not fully focused on God. Okay, remember the principle last week? Ano yung principle? Radical worship, ano yan? Is focused on God alone. Remember, God is a what? A jealous God. And he is a holy God. And when we worship Him, ang gusto niya is lahat ng attention, lahat ng glory sa Kanya lang. Ayaw niya na may ano? May kaagaw. That's why He said in John, uh, Exodus chapter number 20, uh, I am a jealous God. So, when we are worshiping God and He is not getting our 100%, ano ibig sabihin nun? Meron siyang kahate. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, yung 100% na focus natin, hindi na pupunta sa kanya. Merong kumukuha nun. It might be someone or something, and if anything or someone is taking the place of God, then that is a what? Idol. Diba? So, <clears throat> ayon ng Panginoon ng idols. Why? Because He is a jealous God and He is a holy God. So if, God, if we're worshiping God and He is not getting 100% from us, then it means that there's an idol taking his place, okay? taking away some of our attention from uh, from the Lord. Okay, so kung may 95% ba? 95% binibigay natin sa Panginoon, pero yung sabi niyo, 5% na yan, napupunta sa, sa iba. Okay, we may be, sa inyo sinasabi Jesus, we may be worshiping God with our lips, pero sometimes our hearts are what? Far away from the Lord. the Lord. So let us always remember that every time we come before the presence of the Lord and worship Him, 
Dapat fully focus tayo sa Panginoon. Whether we are in a corporate gathering such as this, or during our personal quiet time, our devotions, dapat fully focus tayo sa Panginoon. I remember during our prayer meetings, we were talking about how we can be fully focused on God when we have our devotions. Minsan kasi pag nag-devotion tayo, pag nag-ring yung cellphone, or tumunog yung notification ng FB, ano gagawin natin? Check. Check muna. Ah, wala yan. Okay, balik sa devotion. Okay, so may ano, may kaagaw yung even yung focus yung time natin ay hindi fully sa sa sa, sa Panginoon. Okay, so when we worship God, we must worship God fully and without reservations. Okay, dapat we should worship God with uh, our with our all. Okay, sabihin nyo nga sa katabi nyo ulit, focus on God. You see, I believe that if we would just learn to really focus on the Lord, Every time we worship, then I believe that we would always have a meaningful and wonderful worship experience. Right? Amen. Amen? Amen. We would all have a meaningful and worshipful, uh, meaningful and wonderful worship experience. Even our worship celebrations, if all of us who are gathered here today would be focused on God and God alone, I believe that all of us would leave this place blessed. Right? Dahil ano, we were able to experience God. You see, one of the hardest things or hardest task na ginagawa ng isang worship leader na nasa harap or even ako minsan is uh, to make sure that we are all in the mood for worship. Right? Kasi gusto, kaya nga tayo nag-gather, eh, corporate worship, dapat lahat tayo ano, passionate when it comes to worshiping God. Pero minsan, may mga times, uh, even, you know, Brother Joy would say to us, na parang minsan, ang hirap, ang hirap dalhin ng congregation dun sa mood na kung saan we're really ready to worship the Lord. Yeah? Para minsan, ang hirap. It seems that may mga times na parang we have, we came here not for the very purpose of parang hindi tayo talaga mag-worship sa Panginoon eh. Parang, parang, parang wala lang, parang, bak bakit ba tayo nandito? Right? Um, if you're here in front, you would sense that. Na parang, yung excitement, yung passion, yung focus natin ay wala sa, sa Panginoon. Okay? And, it seems that we're not in the business of worshiping God. Kasi if we are really in the, we really mean business na we would want to worship the Lord, I believe that the very moment that we wake up in the morning, nakafocus na tayo sa pag-worship sa Panginoon, right? Yeah. Okay. Even before you go to sleep last night. Okay. And that, that would reflect on the moment you enter the hall and the moment we start our worship celebrations with the prayer. Okay? Bakit? Kasi... Ano eh, kumbaga, the reason why I'm here is because this is the Lord's day and I want to worship the Lord together with what? My brothers and sisters in the Lord. Okay, so if we really mean business when it comes to worshiping God and we would really focus on the Lord, then I believe that our worship celebrations would be really be uh, meaningful and exciting. Amen? Amen. Now, if all of us would have that kind of attitude, not just on a Friday, okay, but every day of our lives, and most especially, you know, when we have our gatherings, uh, then I believe that we would really experience God. Why? Because we are focused on God, okay? You see, listen to this. If you're focused on God, you will experience God, right? If you're focused on God, you will experience God. The problem sometimes why some Christians leave worship without being changed is because of what? The very reason that they themselves were not fully focused on the Lord. That's why they were not able to experience the Lord. But if you're fully focused on God, then you will experience God. And that's the reason sometimes that we're not learning in our Christian life. You know, in our prayer meetings, we nag-aaralan namin yan, yung how do we learn Christ? Okay. Minsan, ang problema is, habang tumatanda yung Kristiyano, parang hindi ano, natututo. 
Napakarami ng sermons na narinig, pero parang walang, nagigi, walang nangyayari sa buhay bilang isang Christian. Why? It's because they're not really learning. They're probably hearing, but the Lord is not teaching them through the Spirit because what? They're not focused on, on the Lord. Okay? So, the challenge for us is that every time we enter the presence of God to worship, we must be focused on Him and Him alone. Sabi ko nga, maraming distractions sa paligid natin. Eh. If you look at other people, you will be distracted. Right? If you look at things around us, you will be distracted. But no matter what distractions we have around us, if we would learn to really focus our hearts, our minds, our everything unto the Lord when we worship, then I believe that we would experience God. Now, madali ba yun? Mahirap. Di ba? Isa, mahirap. Pero minsan, the problem why we are having a hard time, for example, on a Friday, to focus on God is because during the past week, we have failed to focus on God. Do you hear me? Yes. Right? If you're having a hard time focusing on God on a Friday, then it means you have you had a hard time focusing on God for the past six days. Okay? John Piper said, The greatest enemy of hunger for God is not poison but apple pie. It is not the banquet of the wicked that dulls our appetite for heaven, but endless nibbling at the table of the world. It is not the X-rated video, but the prime time dribble of triviality we drink in every night. Ano ibig sabi nun? You know, hindi minsan yung simple things that what consumes us, like ano Facebook. Ano ba? May mga telenovela ba dito? May mga mga TFC sa KJB, ano? Ano pa? Madaming bagay, di ba? Those simple things that distract us from our Christian life and from focusing on God. Minsan yun ang nagiging problema. That we tend to forget God or neglect God during the week so that when Friday comes and we are to celebrate together with other brethren, we're having a hard time, what? Focusing on on the Lord. So if there's no excitement on a Friday, if there's no eagerness, there's no passion for you to worship God, then it means that during the week, you fail to experience that excitement, that passion with, with God. As John Piper said, we have spent time nibbling at the table of the world instead of experiencing God. So, Pastor Boy earlier said that our attitude when we worship God is very much important. Important. And I would say that our attitude in worshiping God, especially on a Friday, would depend on our experience of God during the week. Okay? So if you had a wonderful week with the Lord, it will show on a Friday, right? It will show when we gather together as a church. If you had a hard time focusing on God personally during the week, you'll have a hard time focusing on God corporately on a Friday or on Monday. Okay, the challenge, the prayer, our prayer should be, Lord, during the week, cause me to focus on you. Cause me to experience you. Cause me to learn from you. So that, kapag Friday, pag nagsama-sama na tayo, excited tayo lahat. Uy, alam mo ba, I experienced God the past week. Praise the Lord. Let's rejoice today. Because the Lord has been good. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> you see, sometimes the problem is not with the music. It's not with the singers. It's not with the pastor, the speaker. It's not with the song leader. Although we're not perfect, we try our best, we give our best in everything that we do, right? Uh, but so, but you, usually the problem is not really with outside factors. If we're distracted in worship. Anong problema? Sa atin, hindi tayo nakafocus kanina sa Panginoon. Okay? That's why some people are don't have that right attitude to worship God on a, 
when we gather corporately is because their hearts are not right before the Lord. Okay? Minsan, kaya nagiging critical minsan eh, na bakit ganun? Ay, hindi maganda yung music. Ay, boring yung sermon ni pastor. Ay, ganda ganto etc. etc. Bakit? Saan nakafocus? Hindi sa Panginoon. Pero if you're focused on God, e even on simple things, God can use that to speak to you. And if you're not focused on Him, you would not hear Him speaking to you. Sometimes, sabi nga natin, God speaks in a still, small voice. right? So we cannot hear God if we're not focused on, on God. Okay? So the challenge for us really is to focus on God and worship Him either personally or corporately. But the challenge is during the week, worship the Lord, experience the Lord so that we would, our joy would just overflow every time we gather together and our worship would be meaningful and wonderful. Trying to answer the question, what is the kind of worship that God does not seek? Now, look at your Bibles, John chapter number 4, verses 22 to 24. It says there, you worship what you do not know, Jesus is saying to the Samaritan woman. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now again... This is a conversation between Jesus Christ and the Samaritan woman. Jesus Christ made it clear to the Samaritan woman that their way of worship is not right. Why? Because it's an idolatrous uh, worship. That's why Jesus said in verse number 22, You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because salvation is of the Jews. Although, again, we said that they acknowledge the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, but their idea of God is mixed with pagan worship and ideology. Okay, that's why um, they are considered as idolatrous people and the way of worship is idolatrous as well. At the same time, uh, they have intermarried with heathens or unbelievers, so that's why their worship, their way of worship was infiltrated with idolatry. So, what you can see here is that although they try to worship God, yet their worship is not acceptable unto God. And that reminds us that we can be worshiping God and our worship can be not acceptable to God. Okay? So that's why we need to know what is the right kind of worship. Okay? Because God is a jealous God. He demands absolute and true worship from His worshipers. Now, if you look at verse number 23, okay? Jesus suddenly changes the mood of the conversation. Okay? Notice he starts with the word but, okay? which signifies contrast. Okay? So Sabi is in verse number 23, but the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Okay? So para si Jesus the Samaritan woman, yes, we, we the Jews worship the one true God. Okay? And we know the God whom we worship because he revealed himself to us. Okay, and we know that He is the one true God because, <coughs> um, because of His revelation unto us. Okay? And the way we worship God is we follow the standards that He demanded or He instructed us to do. Okay? So, sinasabi ng Panginoon, if you look at your worship compared to the worship of the Jews, we know whom we worship. Pero, sinasabi ng Panginoon nito, pero, Although we worship the one true God in a way that He demands from us, Spanish is saying Jesus Christ, that way of worship is about to end because God will try to reform the way of worship from a physical and ritualistic worship into a real and spiritual worship. Okay? Now, what's wrong with the worship of the Jews? Although they worship one true God, and God has given them a set of standards when it comes to worshiping Him. The problem with the Jews is that they have become legalistic or ritualistic in their approach of, in worshiping God. If you study the history of Israel, by the New Testament time, 
Sabi natin that the Jewish rabbis have come up with 613 commandments out of the commandments given by God in the Old Testament. 613. Okay? Thank you po. Let me call her. Okay? These are man-made commandments, 248 mandates and 365 uh, prohibitions. And since then, ang focus ng mga, mga Jews is to strictly observe all of these commandments because they believe that when you strictly observe the commandments, you will gain righteousness from God. So their righteousness is based on what? Observing or keeping, keeping the law. Okay? So it came to a point that they were just ritualistic and legalistic when it comes to their worship, na basta magawa ko to, magawa ko to, kahit na wala yung puso nila dun, as long as ginawa nila, they believe that they are right with God and they are worshiping God. So sabi ng Panginoon sa Samaritan woman, that, that kind of worship is not the kind of worship that God really seeks. God is not just after simply doing activities or rituals, but if you look at verse number 23, Sabi Jesus Christ, the Father is looking for true worshipers who will what? Worship Him in, in spirit and in truth. Why? Because Sabi said, verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So what's the problem with the worship of the Jews? They had, they had the right way of worship and they worship the, the true God. But the problem is is, in other words, they have the right form of worship, but the problem is that their worship was not done in spirit and in truth. Their worship was not done in spirit and in truth. If you open your Bibles to Romans chapter 9, verses 31 to Paul explains it here, but he, and he says, But that Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching the law. Why? <clears throat> because they did not pursue it by faith. So they were pursuing the law, but without what? Faith. But as if it were based on what? Works. So they believe that worshiping God and being right with God has something to do with what? Doing things. That's their belief. Remember, what the things that were gained to me, I thought they were gained. But I counted it as loss for the sake of, of Christ. So the Jews had the form of worship, but they did not have the heart of worship. They had the form of worship, but they did not have the heart of worship. Now, sa mga matin mo ng prayer meeting, take note, I think, makakatulong to sa ating assignment, kaya assignment to prayer meeting. Makakawala nung matinda. Okay. Now, so in other words, if you would look here, the Jews' worship were was what? Insincere. Okay? And that's, the kind of worship that God does not see. God does not like insincere worship. God does not seek insincere worship. That's why Jesus said, true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now what does that mean? Now the word spirit, new mind Greek, refers to our inner being. Okay? Uh, our inner being which bears the image of God. Okay, so when we worship God, we worship God not just physically, but with our what? Inner being that involves everything. Our emotions, our will, etc. Okay, our heart. Okay? And the word truth, aletheia in Greek, refers to something that is real or genuine or truth. Or true. Okay? So to worship God in spirit and in truth, what does it mean? Well, John Piper has this comment about worshiping God in spirit and truth. Listen to this. He said, The two words, spirit and truth, correspond to how and to whom of worship. 
It corresponds to the how and the who of worship. Worshiping in spirit is the opposite of worshiping in mere external ways. It's the opposite of formalism and traditionalism. Worshiping in truth is the opposite of worship based on an ad inadequate view of God. Okay. I think it's there. Together, the word spirit and truth mean that real worship comes from the spirit within and is based on true views of God. Okay. So real worship comes from within. Not from without, but within. And that worship is based on the truth about about God worship must engage your what your emotions and worship must engage your thought okay truth without emotion produces what dead orthodoxy and a church full of unspiritual fighters now emotion without truth what produces frenzy and cultivates flaky people who reject the discipline of rigorous thought. In other words, true worship comes from people who are deeply emotional and who love deep and sound doctrine. Lalim, no? Pero anong, para anong sinasabi ni John Piper dito? In other words, when you worship God in spirit and in truth, it involves the heart and the head. <coughs> okay? In other words, passion for God and the precepts or principles of God go together in worship. We cannot just worship God in spirit. Okay? Because spirit without truth, Sabi John Piper, will be a shallow, overly emotional experience. Means may mga ganun, no? Full of spirit. Pero minsan hindi based on truth. Kaya, ano eh, kita mo, umiiyak talaga. Pag tinanong mo, bakit ka umiiyak? Hindi ko alam eh. Basta. <laughs> Iba naman, worshiping in truth without spirit. Kaya minsan ano, dry, passionless, joyless when it comes to worship. Minsan tayo mga Baptist, ganun eh. Puro truth, pero kulang sa ano? Amen. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Yes, the Lord came. Kulang sa passion, kulang sa emotion. Based on truth nga, pero walang ano eh. Parang kung walang sigla, walang joy, walang excitement. Di ba? So if your worship is just merely emotional, like you feel happy or pumped up after worship, but you really don't know why, then that's not the kind of worship that God seeks. Or if your worship might probably be based on truth, your thoughts, your mind is involved, you understand, naiintindihan mo pa na yung sinasabi ng kanta, yung sinasabi ng pastor, etc., etc. Pero kung wala naman yung puso mo dun, okay, walang joy, dry, kulang din. Diba? Why? Because it says here that God is seeking for worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. In other words, worship involves the heart and the head. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <coughs> If you look at the context, a context neto ay yung spiritual gifts, particularly tongues and prophecies, but still the principle is the same. Okay? Look at verse number four, 13. Start with verse number 13. First Corinthians chapter number 14. Sabi the Apostle Paul, Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he might interpret. Okay? For, verse 14, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what should you do? Sabi ni Paul, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. 
I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? Misa ganun tayo eh, no? Amen? Sasagot, Amen! Ba't ka nag-Amen? Sabi po sa'yo, Amen. Alam mo ba, ibig sabihin na Amen? You agree with what the person said, right? Eh, misa kasi pag, uh, parang iba iniisip mo sa'yo, Amen? Amen. Amen, Amen. 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 Our thoughts should be involved and our hearts must be involved as well, okay? For example, when we sing songs, we don't just simply sing songs. But when you sing songs, you try to understand what the meaning of the song is. Okay? Dapat iniintindi natin. Our mind should be involved in that. Kanina, anong kinata natin? Sabi nung muna kata, Lord, you are good and your mercies, mercies endureth forever. But God is good. And because of that truth, yes, Lord, you are good. I understand that you are good. I know that you are good. Therefore, our heart should respond by saying, yes, Lord, I praise you. And I'm glad and I rejoice because you are good. And I have experienced your goodness in my life. The mind must be involved. We must understand what we're saying, the truth that the song is saying. And our emotions should be involved as well. Sabi nga kanina, if you're crying while you're singing, but you don't know why you're crying, sa tingin na iba, grabe oh, talagang worship na worship siya sa Panginoon. Ang problema na pag masaya yung kanta, ano, umigak ka. <laughs> Pero hindi mo naiintindihan yung kinakanta mo, that's not really worship. Your emotions might be involved, but it's it's not based on what? It's not based on truth. Now, on the other hand, don't just be too intellectual in your approach uh, to worship. You must respond with your emotions as well. Di ba pag masaya tayo? Anong ginagawa natin? Tumatawa, pumapalakpak, lumulunda, di ba? Or whatever, di ba? We respond. Kung masaya tayo at umaawit tayo ng masigla, masaya sa Panginoon, ano gagawin natin? Rejoice in the Lord of heaven and I shall rejoice. Para hindi tayo nagre-rejoice, di ba? Alam natin that we must rejoice and we are rejoicing, pero ano? Hindi involve yung heart natin. Dapat ipakita natin na alam natin, it's based on truth and we must involve our our <coughs> our emotions as well. Sabi nga nga, if you're happy and you know it, what would you do? Clap your hands. Masaya ka pala eh. Ano nga pigit? Pigilin. If you're happy and you're worshiping the Lord and you're happy deep within your heart, what you do? Express it. Okay. Although, of course, um, huwag naman yung inaway na nagiging distraction sa iba. Baka na yung happy nga, ah, okay, yung katabi mo. <laughs> Di ba? Nagiging distraction pa na sa worship. Di ba? But if you're happy, express it. If, you're, if your heart is in pain, you can cry out to the Lord when you worship the Lord. Wala namang bawa, wala namang sinabi. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, what? <coughs> Excuse me. If you're happy, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I, said, I say rejoice. Clap your hands. Sing praises unto the Lord. Shout for joy. Diba? Walang nagbabawal, walang hindi bawal ang mumite. Mag-respond. Diba? Pumalakpak when you are what? Worshiping uh, the Lord. Uh, when you have your, for example, even in your quiet times, during your devotions, and even your gatherings, even by, by just simply reading the Word of God, you worship God. Okay? You don't just read, but you read with understanding. 
And you don't just simply understand, you involve, you involve yourself, your emotions, as you read the Word of God. Hindi yung sabi niya, the Lord is good, His mercy endures forever. Yes, the Lord is good. Pag nabasa niya, the Lord is what? Good. Amen. Right? And His mercy endures forever. Kaya minsan yung, ano eh, yun yung minsan yung kulang sa atin eh. Alam natin yung totoo, pero ano, sabi nga sa gilas, kulang sa ano? Puso. Sa puso. Okay? Evolve your heart, involve your emotions when you praise the Lord. Kaya minsan yung sa worship, dapat nagre-respond tayo eh. Hindi yung... Amen. Ah, ganun lang tayo. Para ano, di ba? If you agree with what the pastor is saying or what someone says, he says what? Amen! That's right! Kaya minsan yung ano, mga exciting mag-preach dun sa mga ano eh. Ano yung sa mga itim na churches sa Amerika? Amen! May spisi ko yung sa mga, Preach it, pastor! Preach it, brother! That's right! Yeah! Hindi ka naman sinasabi ko yung ganun tayo. Pero ano? You can see their involvement. Okay? They involve their minds and they involve their hearts. But we must be very careful na minsan that we become too emotional without the truth. Dapat laging ano yan? That's how we worship God. Sabi ng Pahino, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. And this is the principle that we can see here. Radical worship principle number two. Radical worship is a fervent experience. Radical worship is a fervent, or another word for that is a passionate experience. Okay? Sabi nyo, radical worship is a passionate experience. In other words, when you have a passionate experience of God and with God, then you have truly worshipped God. Kapag hindi naging passionate yung worship natin sa Panginoon, may kunang. If you're passionate about something, Anong, anong nangyayari sa'yo? For example, ako, I love basketball. Right? And I'm passionate when it comes to basketball. Kaya kahit na medyo malaki na yung chunk ko at medyo tumatanda na tayo, ay naglalaro pa rin tayo ng basketball. Bakit? Kasi uh, passion ko yan eh. Diba? Uh, minsan kahit yung, yung utak, yung katawan hindi na makahabol sa utak. Yung utak ko, nandun na ako, pero yung katawan, hindi ito pala. <laughs> pero tuloy pa rin. Di ba bakit? Kasi ano, ah, passion yan eh. Minsan, kahit busy, kahit pagod. Oh, sige, laro tayo. Pa pa passion natin yan, basketball eh. So, hindi lang sa paglalaro, kahit sa panunood. Pag nanood ako ng basketball, ano, hindi lang yung nakagano'n ako. Lalo na kapag ano, lalo na championship yan, ano? Malapit na yung championship sa NBA. Talaga, pag, pag may magandang play, ano, oh, ayos, grabe, nice. Uh, di ba? May isa ka, yung, even yung pag, matindi yun, ano yun, kay Pacquiao, pag may laban si Pacquiao, no? live streaming ako, may isa, alas 5 na umaga dito, ano? ako na mag-isa sa kwarto. Eh, tulog pa si, minsan si kami sa si Zoe, di ba? Pero isa, oh, sige, sige! Nagano'n ako, pero mag-isa lang ako. Masa inihinahan ako. Para akong ewan <laughs> Pero hindi pwede yung, ito lang yung involved eh. Kasama, kasama yung passion eh. Yung emotions eh. Why? Because you're what? You're passionate about, about something, right? Andun yung, and after that experience, you have that sense of fulfillment. Di ba? Kasi alam mo, mag, ano eh, parang yung experience ko iba eh. I was really able to experience, passionately experience something. Now, the same thing is true with our God. When we worship God, we can, we can have a meaningful and worship experience if we passionately worship and experience the Lord. Okay? If we're passionate about God and worshiping Him, we would see the same thing. It would be evident in the way we worship 
And at the end of each worship experience, we would have that sense of fulfillment. Di ba? Ay! Iba yung araw na to. I was... I, I experienced God during my worship. Or during our worship. I've learned and I was able to express my worship self. Sa Panginoon. You would find that sense of fulfillment and spiritual satisfaction when you worship God in spirit and in truth. I would like to close with this. Jonathan Edwards said, I should think myself in the way of my duty to raise that the affections or the emotions of my hearers as high as possibly I can, provided that they are affected with nothing but the truth. Again, the challenge for us is to what? Be, be passionate in our worship sa Panginoon. And that passion must be stirred up by the truth of the Word of God. Someone said the truth of God being of infinite value is worthy of infinite passion. The truth of God is worthy of what? Passion. The truth of God is worthy of our passion. The truth of God is worthy of our passion. If you're not passionately worshiping God because of the truth of God, then there's something missing in worship, in your worship. Okay? True and meaningful worship that the Father seeks is sincere. Involve ang puso. Involve ito. We understand the truth, and because of that truth, our hearts are being stirred up. So we can express that passion from within based on the truth of the Word of God. It is worshiping God with passion because of the truth of God. Now as we close, let's have a personal reflection. How was your worship today? Did you worship God in spirit and in truth? May spirit ba? Involved by yung emotions natin sa pag-worship sa Panginoon. Okay. How was your singing? Did you understand the messages of the songs? Did you sing with your heart because of the truth found in those songs? Were you moved by the truths? If you were not moved with the truth of God, then probably you have not understood, probably you understood the truth, but you have not really reflected on the truth that in a way it will stir up your emotions. It will stir up your hearts. Hanggang dito lang, pero hindi umabot sa Dito. Okay? Kaya pag nag-worship tayo, dapat nakafocus tayo sa Panginoon and involve ito and dapat involve, involve din yun. Puso natin. So did you worship God with your head and with your heart? Pangalawa, how can you be more passionate in worship? Sa tingin nyo, how can you be more passionate when you worship God? Ano sa, sa tingin nyo yung gusto ipagawa sa inyo ng Panginoon? Para the next time that we would gather together as a church or even during your personal quiet time when you worship the Lord, I may express, may worship mo talaga ang Panginoon in spirit and in truth. Meaning you would really know the truth and you're, you would respond in a way uh, that is passionate worship because of the truth that you have learned. Okay? Meron bang humahad lang para hindi mo may express yung worship mo sa Panginoon? Probably, hindi ka na yung nakalakihan natin or some traditions, or some practices na kailangan natin alisin, some perspectives, or probably some disciplines that we need to develop deep within ourselves para pag, pag nag-worship tayo sa Panginoon, ay we would be able to really worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay? So, eto, maganda eh. Siguro, ano, anong pwede natin gawin? Anong disciplines na pwede natin gawin? Before, during and after worship. On a Friday, 
context and worship service. What disciplines can do you think can you do before, during, and after worship? Okay? Para matrain natin sarili natin to worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay? Now, I want you to write down at least one. One discipline that you can do. Okay? So that you can worship God in spirit and truth. Alam niyo, dapat pag nag-aaral din tayo ng Panginoon, that's one way to be involved. Okay? Don't just write kung ano yung nakalagay dito. Write what you're learning. You're responding. Okay? Write the truths that you're learning. Okay? That's how you get involved even when we study the Word of God. Okay? Kaya mahalaga, meron kayong notes. Meron tayong sermon notes dyan. Okay? Kung wala kayong ball pen, dapat meron din kayo. Okay? So right now, what are the things that you can do so that you can be intentional in your worship so that you can really worship God in spirit and 